All right, so I am at Smith Rock. Uh, a friend actually told me about this area. I had no clue it even existed. But it's supposed to be one of the prettier places in Oregon to even see. It's really close to Bend, Oregon, and where Bend is, there's like two biomes, I guess, in Oregon. You kind of have desert, and then you have forest, and they kind of converge here uh, in the Bend area. So it's kind of a unique type of landscape. I think this is the more deserty side over here. There's a little hike I can do. It's about like a four mile loop or something. So we'll figure that out. And then right now I'm just making a salad situation. So there's no parking left uh, at the base of the trailhead I wanted to hike. So I went down a little further and there was some parking at this, this other area. I'm just gonna take an extra trail to get over there. So it's gonna add you know, a few miles or something. It's not going to be that much. I think it'll be around seven miles total for the whole trip. That's the um, the big climb right there. There's a big loop once you get up on top of the rock, though, so you can kind of walk all over the place and see all the sights from up there. It's a really pretty river, though, that comes through. So I'm kind of glad I'm taking some of these these extra trails. I get to walk along the river some. Look, Dakota. Snake. Found one. Tacoa is one of my cousins. He he likes snakes and he wanted me to let him know when I found a snake. So I found a snake. There you go, buddy. Also, other cousins. I got to name them too. Uh, there's Olivia and Isabella, and those are three of my cousins. And so now they've, they've been on the show. You'll, you'll all know about them now. Cool. You can see where some people have been bouldering. It looks like one person got pretty brave and decided to go up that way too. Pretty intense. He made it, good for him. There's the van over there, right in the middle. Really pretty little valley though, or canyon. I don't know what this is. All right, I think this is the top, I'm not sure. There's a cool little point lookout here. See how dangerous this is before I get too close. Okay, it's a little dangerous. We'll stay right here. Not bad. Not bad at all. And then there's just farmland. <laughs> cool. There's some longer trails that run along back there. Usually for like overnight hiking. Looks like they'd be kind of fun, but I think some of the best views are, are in this area right here. As soon as I got to the top there, I started chatting with uh, a lady from the Netherlands and some dude from San Francisco. And um, while we were talking, we just kind of noticed up in the distance, you could see Mount Hood <laughs> kind of through, through some of the mountains over there. It's funny to think that you can see something that far away, you know? So Mount Hood is apparently very big. I saw it some while I was driving in. Um, I'm pretty excited because that's, that's the next place I'm heading to. So we'll be in the Mount Hood area tomorrow. Got a few sneak peeks of it, I suppose. Okay, so I started walking down the wrong trail up here. It was cool because you could see the mountain climbers, but um, like the trail was way down there. I thought it was back that way, so I don't know. Some lady said it was back over the hill, so I. I <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong. Oh. No. <laughs> All right. How did I miss that? <laughs> Whatever. All right, over there, I got like a otter or something just chowing down on that fish. All right, so I found a place I'm gonna stay for the evening, just a few miles down the road from Smith Rock. I, I'll show you where I'm at in a little bit. But there's a little overlook here. There's like a bridge or something. Okay, I didn't know what to expect, but this is actually, um, this is actually pretty cool. Oh my goodness, I just realized, like, look at this. It's a serious drop off. And uh, here's where I'm staying. You can see the railroad tracks are right up there, so might be a little noisy. It didn't get the best reviews online because a lot of trucks will stop here and idle at night, so I don't know. I'm not so much worried about the trucks as I am the, uh, the train. But there is a little rest house over there, so you can use the restroom and stuff. And it's right on the highway, so you can get going again in the morning. All right, so this dirt road is where GPS lady wants us to go. Um, 
don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> I think I can get there if I just keep going up this main road. I think it'll turn off. I don't think it'll be too much further. Right. It's one of those roads that doesn't even have a name. It's just like Road S5630251. You're like, yeah, I don't know if that's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, this is a much better option. I had to just kind of do it. I mean, I didn't have any signal left, so I just had to drive and the GPS just got confused because there's no data out here. Ooh, spooky road right here, guys. About to bump into Slender Man or something if I don't get out of here before nightfall. Oh crap, another car. It's just, it's the no signal thing, you know? Not being able to call anybody is the thing that's kind of creepy about being out in the middle of nowhere by yourself. Although that car that just passed me was like, a very nice looking lady with a little pink scarf on. So, you know, it's not like it's that bad, but it still, I mean, look at this crap though. Like snow and stuff all over the road and, uh, uh, see this, this. We did it. All right, so this one takes the cake. This is by far the most remote I have been on this entire trip. There's like nobody out here. There is a little campground set up. Apparently a snowmobile club or something in the area um, just kind of group funded it or did fundraising for it or something. But yeah, there's just areas where you can camp. I don't know if it's even paid camping. I think it's one of those things where it's just like, first come, first serve. You drive out, you camp. Anyways, this is the trailhead. It's only a quarter mile hike over to, to um, little crater lake so i'll walk over and check that out i think it'll probably be a quick thing but this is a really pretty area it, it would be nice to stay a night here it, it would be a little scary i think being here alone at night though if i'm being perfectly honest i'm not that brave I, <laughs> it's, it's too much for me all right all right i got my bear spray so you know makes me feel a little better it's only black bears that are around here i mean a black bear is still kill you pretty fast if it wants to but they're not quite as aggressive um, or big as like grizzlies and stuff so we don't have to worry about grizzlies just yet but don't worry they're coming oh it's just right there that wasn't even a half a mile whoa you can see like way down in there that's pretty cool there's a little walkway that goes around I'm kind of catching the Sun right here Let's see if I can get a better angle that is some very clear water though, holy crap. I don't know what this is, is this like a, like, it's called Little Crater Lake, so was it a volcano thing or? I guess it must be, I don't know. That's nuts, there's like trees that have fallen down into it and you can see it underwater. It's an adventurous drive out, so I guess it's kind of worth it for that. I, I, man, it, this is in the middle of nowhere though. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, so this is Trillium Lake. Uh, I didn't know that it was, I had read about it, but I decided I was gonna go to Mirror Lake instead. And I'm still going to Mirror Lake, but I drove by and it was like parking for Trillium right here on the left. And I was like, oh, okay, so it's on the way. So we're gonna go, go check this out real quick and then uh, head on over to Mirror Lake. Mirror Lake is one I'm really excited about, but I've heard Trillium Lake is really cool too, so. Well, apparently it's just two miles of this kind of crap, so... <laughs> see how this goes. Why didn't I go back and get my boots? I, I was like, I, I was like 10 feet onto the trail and I realized it was gonna be nothing but this the whole way. And, and I was like, ah, no, it's fine. I'll just walk around in these worn down road shoes. So stupid. Well, on the bright side, this is not a six and a half mile hike. There was a dude hiking behind me. I looked back and noticed he was gone. So either he got eaten by a mountain lion or I was going the wrong way. And then I remembered, oh, I have signal, you know. So I looked and uh, this is definitely not the way towards any lake. <sighs> All right. Probably gonna end up being a six and a half mile freaking hike before I ever make it to this stupid lake. If this was just regular road, I could probably be back by now. It's just trudging through the snow. This is really confusing. I'm just gonna keep going straight. All right, here we go. Now we can see it. 
Well, we made it. Back to the parking lot. I'm ready to get out of these soaked shoes, man. <laughs> Round two, I guess. I did put on some boots this time. They're not hiking boots, they're like surplus military boots I got, but they have tread, so there's that. Other than the uh, fear of getting caught in the dark out here, you know, with Slender Man or something, um, this is a very pretty hike. I, I'm enjoying it a whole lot. This is the Oregon I was hoping for. Whew. Oh, down low. Oh, so the lake is frozen. I mean, I guess that's pretty neat, but not gonna be very mirror-y. I can't really see Mount Hood. I don't know which direction it is. All right, so we're walking back. I know I could have walked around and gotten a cooler shot of Mount Hood. So for all of y'all who are thinking, oh, Ian, you should have gotten a cooler shot, you know, with Mount Hood in the background, what I'd like to say to you is, I think it'd be way cooler if I was like in my van right now. So I'm gonna go do that. Yeah.